Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Deacon Bob, seeing humor and hope in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And I'm Deacon Bob. How you doing, folks? Father Dave Pavonka. <laughs> if you don't watch, and oh, you miss so much if you don't watch, uh, you can go to YouTube slash, I don't know, whatever I am, Bob Rice, and see these videos if you don't already. Uh, Father Dave was holding up a dog, a stuffed dog. Yep. A stuffed dog. You know, the students have said over the years, oh, Father Dave, we want to get you a dog. And honestly, there was one particular time I literally thought I, they were going to get me one. You were going to get like a puppy in a box. Little, they got me this little stuffed animal dog, and it just wanted to say hi. So Wow, that's great. Now, yeah. do they know what you normally do to stuffed animals, a.k.a. Grogu? Um, and that people uh, steal them and I never see them again? I don't know that they do them that. Uh, Grogu is safe, and he is still... Uh, marked from the one who threw Grogu into the fireplace. Which was one of the other friars. Well, so. it was under your watch, bro. Okay, here's here's the situation I find myself <laughs> in, Robert. Okay, David. I've been away, and yeah. I am listening to the news and reading a little bit. Like, you didn't fill me in. I mean, the world is basically falling apart, and you didn't tell me. <laughs> I thought it's just the world is in a constant state of falling apart, and I didn't feel the need to update you on that. Maybe all right. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Fair enough. What were the okay. uh, what were the key falling apart moments though that you thought of? Well, a mutiny in Russia. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. You know it's I ironic guess... because I I might have told you the story. I went to a young life camp when I was a teenager. In Russia? Oh. No, it wasn't in Russia. It was in New York actually. But I suppose um, you were with your aunt who was the pilot. Exactly. So uh, I was there for a month and you didn't have any news there. You didn't even have cell phones or Internet back then. But I came out and I visited my one of my aunts, not the same aunt who was in Virginia on the way home. And she said, isn't it amazing that the Berlin Wall collapsed? And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> like nobody, nobody told. Uh, that's that's the kind of information that you should tell somebody. Yeah, that that might be something that might yeah. be something. You give them hey, a heads up. Oh, yeah, by just the way. oh, by the way, communism. You know that th it's all gone. The whole That's Cold good. War thing. Don't worry about it. It's good. Yeah, just, good. just go home. So yeah, the mutiny in Russia. I don't know how. I, I mean, it's kind of cool that you're seeing in Russia people being like, "This was a bad idea, and we're gonna try to take over." I don't know how well it went. You know, Russia is not really well, the most forthcoming with news information. Yeah, no, I was listening to a podcast, and they said. Um, this guy that I don't remember the name of the guy. It was the Wagner Group. I don't exactly. I just was hearing part bits and pieces. But they said uh, if he's smart, this guy is not going to spend a lot of time uh, close to windows, yeah. and it's going to be hard to get a life insurance policy on this guy. Yeah. No, that was just kind of crazy. And then, I mean, the submersible submarine thing. Oh like, yeah, that was sad. That was really awful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was it? Five people who died in that. Yeah, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of hype about it because we thought that they might be alive and yeah. losing air, and um, that was kind of a dramatic thing. But then it was like, oh, actually, it blew up, and people were like, oh, that's too bad. No, it didn't so, blow up. It imploded. Oh, it didn't. Oh, it imploded. okay, fine. It wasn't an explosion. It was an implosion. Implosion. Thank you, Doctor David. Well, they're explaining what that is, and it's just I don't know. I just. I, I saw one of the interviews. Actually, what is it? I don't know. It, it, just, it was like the pressures from the outside like squished it? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. But they were talking to the mother of the the wife of one of the guys and the mother of the little boy who died. I mean, I don't know. It was a little boy. I mean, he was 13 or something. Yeah. But she was supposed to be on that, and her son wanted to go. And I mean, just, you could just see yeah. the, the in her face. So that was yeah. awful. That is sad. So that was part of the news. The big news of the weekend, the big sporting news of the weekend, was Ricky Fowler won a golf tournament. Is not one in four years. Okay. Yeah, it was an amazing finish. I'm sure you were. I, mean, I don't have to tell you because you were. Oh, watching I was it. riveted. I mean, okay, I was going. You, I was going back and forth between golfing and bass fishing, trying to figure out where the more exciting thing would be. That's that's what I'm left with at this time of sporting year. It's very I totally, I totally get that. I'm totally there with you. But yeah. it's really cool, actually. He hasn't won in four years. And since then, he's got married and he's got a baby. And, um, you know, they said, you know, what's it like now that you finally won again? He goes, you know, it's great to win. Um, but after all that's happened in my life, it's just a golf tournament. And there's wow. a lot. There's, and he's holding his daughter. She's about maybe 18 months Oh, says there's a lot, there's things a lot more important than golf, and I just it was just a, I thought a really touching moment, and yeah, remind people what we're up to. So that was that. 
And didn't and somebody new win in the U.S. Open? Was it like Wyndham, Hilton? Yeah. Um, Holiday yeah. Inn? Yeah. Something? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we don't care about him. Oh, uh, we don't. Not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has to win again. He has to win again. And a perfect game for Throne. I don't remember the name of the guy for the Yankees. Uh, so all of this, all of this stuff happened while I was gone. I can't believe you just glossed over the perfect game being thrown. Like, that's a really, yeah. really big deal, isn't it? It is a huge deal. I think there's only been like 25 that have been done, maybe 26. Yeah. It was a Yankees. It was a Yankees pitcher. And and, um, and, and they, it was against Oakland, which... Eh. Yeah, which is... But yeah, yeah. isn't that normally the case? Like, if you're going to pitch a perfect game, it's going to be against a team that's really Not bad. Close. It's, it's okay. never going to be like, you know, Yankees versus Red Sox, you know, like people who can actually do stuff. Be, but yeah, it's still yeah. amazing, though, right? Yeah, no. It's still, I mean, the, and a perfect yeah. game means, what's the difference between a perfect game and a no-hitter? Perfect game, nobody gets on base. The All outs, nine times three, those many outs in a row. 27 outs in a row, that's it, whatever it is. How do you get on base if you don't hit it, though? You oh, you can walk error. You could have an error. You could oh. walk. In. Right, right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So nobody gets on base, which, yeah, it's it's really, really rare. The guys, I'm not a huge fan of this guy. It's kind of a, not a very, not a very the pit, good guy. The pitcher guy? Yeah. He's no Ricky Fowler. No. No, we yeah. like Ricky Fowler. We like, we like, position, we like. The official position of They That Hope is we like Ricky Fowler. And we might end up liking the other guy that we just don't know we about. Might, if he wins again. That's because that's what, that's what and matters. He, and he donates to our capital campaign. So, yeah. NBA news, um, just uh, part of the big buzz is that Damian Lillard, uh, who is an all-star in Portland, famous for Dame time, he's an incredible player, uh, he wants out of Portland and he wants to go to Miami. And if that mm -hmm. ends up happening, uh, if you get Damian Lillard next to Jimmy Butler and Bam Abagayo, then um, it's going to be pretty crazy. Is going yeah. to be. It, I mean, they're already a great team, obviously, because they made it yeah. to the finals. And let's not forget Kevin Love. No, let's not. Okay, here's can, can I last one last thing before we move on? Yep. Oh, you know, I just returned from Scotland. Scottish, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, me and uh, about five or six of the friars last night watched Braveheart. <laughs> what's awesome. your official, What's your official position on that film? My official position on the film? Yeah. One of yeah. Mel Gibson's best films. Okay. To be sure. Okay. Um, great action. Yeah. Um, I mean, I loved the film. I thought it was great. I hadn't seen it. I honestly, I bet you I haven't seen it. Fifteen years? No, it, it really was. I was. I had forgotten how good of a movie it was. Yeah. It's hard it's as a, as somebody that works at Franciscan. There's a household of men called AMDG, and they wear kilts and they seem to revere this movie like it's the fifth gospel. And yeah. so that makes yeah. you kind of like I hear Braveheart and I think, oh, those idiots. But it's still a great movie. Well, it's funny because when I was in Gomming, um, you're on the bus a lot when you're going back and forth to places. So you watch yeah. movies, and that's always a popular one. So yeah. at the time, I had seen Braveheart many times, but <laughs> it, it's, it's it's largely fiction, but it was still good. Yeah. yeah, based on a true story. Oh, absolutely. We went to we uh, went to the William Wallace Memorial in yeah. Scotland. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. But Maybe, it, it takes some liberties, just like. Another uh, movie that, based on a true story, but some slight liberties, I'm told, was Cocaine Bear. Um, I don't think so. That was pretty was much that, a documentary. Was that, was that pretty much straight-up documentary? It was a documentary, yep. Okay, yep. fair enough. Yep. Yep. Good fair call. enough. Good I'm call. actually in New Hampshire, and we have lots of bear alerts here. Many oh. signs are up. You're not allowed to have a bird feeder up right now um, awesome. because there's a lot of bear activity. And, have you um, ever seen a bear in the wild? No, I have not. I hope you do. I hope a bear comes by your patio tonight. Wow. Aren't they like dangerous killing machines? Not if you have sweets. Okay. Maybe yeah. maybe uh, they can make a movie called Marijuana Bear. Get some where sour the bear is just totally just, chill, just, just hugs you, to listens to some dead, you know, just really wants some munchies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get some Sour Patch Kids because bears love mm. Sour Patch Kids. Do they? Yep. I hear if one attacks you, the best thing to do is run up and punch it in the nose. Good. Drop, roll, and <laughs> Yes, please. And nobody listening to us ever do anything like that. Nobody is listening to us. We should probably yeah. move on. All right. Hit the music. Uh, 
Our Student Bill Conferences are in full swing, and it's not too late for you to join us. One of our most popular conferences is Defending the Faith, which is coming up July 28th through 30th and be held right here at Franciscan University. Of course, by right here, I mean right there where Father Dave is, because like I said, I am in New Hampshire. Whether you want to be more confident in sharing the faith with others or just learn how to live it better in your everyday life, Defending the Faith is for you. We have a lineup of fantastic speakers, including Dr. Edward Shree, love that guy, Trent Horn, who has the greatest name for a podcast. Do you know his podcast name for Trent no. Horn's podcast? It's called The Council of Trent. Well, that's fantastic. That's so much better than ours. Mm. Uh, there's right. some obscure uh, Protestant converts, Kimberly and Scott Hein, Han. I think it's like time permitting. Uh, Jeff Cavins, that. Noel Maring, and Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Do we just have him on retainer like he was just here? Coming back, baby. Coming Dude, back. He's awesome. Come and learn from these amazing speakers. Experience powerful worship. And spend time with Catholics from across the country. I hope you can join me and Father Dave at the Defending the Faith Conference, July 28th through 30th. You can register and find out more at steubenvilleconferences.com. That's steubenvilleconferences.com. And I'm really psyched oh. about that conference. That's always a great way to that's finish great, our summer. Actually, that's a great lineup. Do you know Noel, Mary? No, no, I don't. She wrote, uh, Awake, Not Woke. Okay. She's a rock star. Nice. I look forward yeah, to meeting you're, her. You're going to love her. She is so, so sharp, so bright. I mean, she's really speaking into this whole world of wokeism. Yeah. Uh, you're yeah. You're going to love her. Actually, now, I'm not. I'm not there. I'm only there. Maybe uh, I'm in some meetings. Okay. I think I'll arrive home Saturday night, maybe. So I'll probably just see you for mass on Sunday. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I was actually going to ask. I know often you're present there. Or you do the Sunday mass, so I didn't know if you were going to be able to pull that off this year or not. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be doing meetings. Why don't you talk about um, your upcoming? I'm always confused about this. You guys have this. It, the provincial. You guys meet right okay. once a year. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is kind of a big time for us in the community. So we have every four years what's called a chapter, and the chapter is when all the friars get together and major decisions and changes in the in the province and the community. Are, are discussed and debated. We elect new uh, leadership, those kinds of things, resolutions for the next many years. Do you think the uh, plaid habits will win this year in the voting cycle? Is that you one know, of the things you talk lot, about? There's a lot of uh, kind of excitement about the new plaid. Right. Well, I know yeah. fashion is a big thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was some kind of catwalk thing, right, where the younger... There was. There it's kind was. of a hazing thing, I heard, actually. You get yeah. the uh, yeah. the young guys like modeling you know, different things. Kind of in the light of my time in Scotland, it's kind of a kilt type. Oh, yeah. nice! Yeah, it, yeah you guys, be, you guys could show some of the knee. No, no, it's below the knee. I mean, there's oh. we've got standards there, but it's below. <laughs> it's gonna be a plaid. Um, it, I think you're, I think you're gonna like it. Yeah, get plaid Velcro. is my favorite color. Yeah, 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 Velcro cord. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Mm, yeah, uh, but nice. it's great. So we'll we'll elect a new provincial. Um, we'll elect a new council. I'm I presently serve on the council. Oh wait, so. wait, time out, time out. You're going to elect a new. Oh, so is it is Father Joe's term up? Has it been four years? How it's long do you get years. to be a provincial? He could be reelected. Right. Okay. He could be reelected. So we elect a provincial again. So it could be Father Joe for another four years. Okay. It could be another prior. It won't uh, be then, you though, right? Like as the president, they wouldn't do something right, like that to you. Right. 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 So I didn't. Uh, I didn't put my name in to be voted on, so it yeah. would not be possible that it's me. But yeah, this is where we'll see changes. I mean, there'll be friars will be transferred from Franciscan. There'll be friars, friars will be transferred to Franciscan. Yeah, it's okay. always kind of an interesting time. I mean, it's just our life. This is this is our life, and this is how it works. But it's kind of, I, I mean, I'm pretty well set that I'll be in the same place. But okay. I don't know exactly who will be here, so it's kind of hard to manage some of that because I know. I'm sure some of the friars are going to be transferred. We have needs in other places, uh, and we'll get new friars too. So it's always kind of an interesting thing. So it sounds just, kind of like yeah. the military, like there's just deployments and shifts and. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd ask everyone to keep us in your prayers. Uh, we we actually have our profession. Did you meet Brother Will? Who was on campus this is year? Is he really really tall and he looks he very is. very young? Yes, he does, and yes. he is uber uber intelligent. I mean, oh, just nice, just. Yeah, really. It's just he's such a great blessing in our community. So he'll make his solemn vows. So that's his final profession will be on Saturday. So we'll have that on Saturday. 
and then we'll start our our, profe- or our chapter on Sunday evening. So as a Franciscan, do you do vows before ordination? How does you that? Do, you, yeah, you have to be in solemn okay. vows uh, before you're ordained a deacon, right? So okay. he'll make solemn vows, and he'll probably be ordained a deacon sometime in the fall. The most get. important ordination, the first. The first of several. The well, first of several. Without that, you can't get the others. So, right, right, absolutely, and um, yeah. So you have to be in solemn vows or connected to a diocese. So he'll he'll make his solemn vows, and it'll be great. I'm sorry for all these random questions. Do can you ever be a priest, like a diocesan priest, and say, you know what? Actually, I'm going to join. Yeah. The Franciscans. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had we've had friars who've done that over the years. Yeah, they have to go through the the formation process, and then they they get released from their diocese and then they have able to incarnate into the community. Yeah, it can happen. That's cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely just, be praying for you guys. Thank you. And just for the record, we do have not many, but over the over the time we've had some friars that were permanent deacons, that they, they didn't feel called to be priests, but they felt called to be deacons. So there's been some of those as well. Wow. And brothers, those that didn't feel any call to be ordained, right? Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I want to talk about something. I got a DM, and I'm going to read this, from an outstanding uh, student here at Franciscan University. Ooh. Um, she's, uh, she's a loyal listener, which we are always grateful for. Always grateful, thank says, you. She says, this is like one of the top, she's just a great student, great person. She says, you should discuss the Americanization of the 4th of July weekend at Mass like playing America the, America the Beautiful oh. yeah. or other patriotic songs, having red, white, and blue, not talking about the gospel or the readings, but instead just talking about America, sometimes political. America. My, actually, and she goes, um, so thoughts about that? And I was just curious about what you thought about that. So are you suggesting that the American flag dalmatic that I had somebody make at Etsy was inappropriate for yesterday's liturgy? Um, I am actually. I am. Oh, I am. okay, okay. Because exactly. it, 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 it was glittery. That's it. Exactly. Kind of. It. I was kind of going for the Neil Diamond America, you know, jacket that he had, and was like, "They're coming to America," you know. That's, today. No, that's, that's pretty much exactly what I'm saying. And for those who maybe don't listen regularly or think Bob is serious, um, <laughs> I want to apologize for that. But I mean, you know, the, can you imagine that, how many listeners we lose just because they listen once and they're like, these yeah, guys are, yeah, yeah, this guy's whacked. Yeah, this, yeah, these yeah. guys are whacked. So People seriously, are... no, that's a great question. You know, it's interesting. Um, so I would say the parish I'm currently in is maybe more extreme than I'm used to, which is to say, and I think this might be well, I said the word extreme. So there's my opinion on it. Like Memorial Day, we're not mentioning it. Mother's Day. No, you know, like just the liturgy is the liturgy and it's almost like we don't pay any attention to what's going on in in the world. You know, that's, you know, the other kind of holidays. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the two extremes of like one is just pretend like nothing's happening. And the other would be I I would say like you could throw you could say July 4th. You could say Mother's Day. um, Arbor Day, you know, lots yeah, of tree some of the songs. Civil holidays that we have, right, right. Some right. of the civil holidays. That Thanksgiving, we but that Thanksgiving's an oh, such an easy connection because it's Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. Yeah, but you can think of some of the other, you know, I don't know, other significant days in the, you know, the end of World War II, uh, Martin yeah. Luther King Day, President's Day, Arbor Day, which is a big big celebration arbor day is huge but but, yeah. the, but my i think i think her question is good is that there's there's a tension that exists in there that we are we are the body of christ and we're in the body of christ within a context and with a culture right and that culture yeah. you know right now is that, that we live in the united states of america we don't live in africa we don't live in europe so that there's something about that you know i think it's it's important that we that the liturgy um obviously that we encounter the Lord in the presence of the Eucharist and, the, and just the worship that is the Eucharist. Um, I remember, also- not to interrupt, no, no, actually I intend completely mean to interrupt, but I think it's a good point. I, I remember one of our early episodes, or maybe it was actually on my Speaking with Deacons podcast, uh, you were talking about homiletics, and one of the things you said a homiletics professor said is that we should prepare a homily with the Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. You know, right. that idea of that you're trying to connect 
you know, connect well, things in a bring, positive we've way. We've got it right, exactly. That we've got to bring the gospel alive in the individual's life. It's yeah, you know, the gospel is the nature of the incarnation is God enters the messiness of our world, right? And we need yeah. to be able to illuminate what's going on in people's day to day life. That God's presence is there. That that the world is grace. The world is pre- that He's present. Now, I think one can do that without. The focus, the focus of the Eucharist has always got to be Jesus. You know, this is something you and I have talked about, how oftentimes um, during homilies, it's it's on something other than Jesus. Right. Right. And and obviously there's a connection on conversion and grace and all these things that are that are great themes for homilies. But I think you can go too far and the focus becomes almost a political rally or a, or a, you know, Olympic rally, yay America. And, and I, you know, I love, I love our country. Some of the things our country mm-hmm. does drive me crazy, uh, but I love our country. But the 4th of July, the celebration is still the Eucharist. It's not, it's not a yeah. pro America rally. And I think musically speaking, cause I think she mentioned something about the songs we sing, yeah. you know, there are songs you know, I might say something like "God Bless America," which I haven't really thought of the lyrics lately. But the title seems really, really good. <laughs> you know, might be appropriate. But maybe "My Country Tis of Thee," which is just all about the country. Right. Maybe not so how much. About, I actually, about, I always think of, um, you know, the times I've done it, uh, played music at things like that. Uh, "Immaculate Mary" is a great song because the last verse, which sometimes people don't get to, is you know, praying for our native land, and I yeah, think that's. Yeah. That's a nice touch, you know. It's like we're faith aware that today fathers. we're celebrating our yeah, yeah. Faith of our fathers would be another really good one. So, yeah. How about well, I'm proud to be an American. Mm. No, I well, I, I think for a communion don't song, go, sure. Don't go too far. I knew you were going to go too far. <laughs> you said put that out there. I yes, and it's my improv training. I I, I used I you say I say yes, and and then I take it another yes. step. As soon as you say put it, I, I try to jump in as quickly as I can. <laughs> No, I think that's I think that's good though. Is that they're is coming that, to America today? Opening you, song. You can give a wink to it, and and it's it's not to say that you can't mention it, but it, it can't be dominant. It can't be the focus. It's, right. It's it's, it's got to be Jesus. It's got to be worship of Jesus. It's got to be a community gathering to worship. So, if you lose sight of that, no matter what it is, honestly, if you lose sight of that, uh, something something's gone awry. Well, and I think within the liturgy itself, there's always the connection to the world around us in the intercessions. And sure. maybe as a deacon, I'm I'm more aware of this because that's part of the diaconate role is I'm always reading the intercessions. I can tell you, I even as a faithful daily communicant Catholic, um, I didn't notice there was always a pattern to the intercessions until I went into diaconate formation. It's yeah. it's really, you, you pray for the Pope, you pray for the bishops, and then you're praying for world leaders and you're praying for society. And that's something that Paul uh, encouraged, actually commanded really yeah. in, uh, in his letters that we, we pray for local government, that we do believe that the authority of God rests in some part in the local governing body and that we are to be faithful to that governing body in as much as it does not conflict or go sure. against any other, any sure. other scriptural teachings. And so, I think a day that we celebrate the country is a day that we might celebrate God giving us government without which we are in chaos. But again, it's always that idea of we're connecting it back to the Lord and we're using it as a chance to pray to the Lord and we're not coming out in star-spangled vestments. Amen. Amen. We want to thank our the the student who sent in that magnificent question. Okay. Are you getting in are you are you getting in other questions for us to talk about you talked about that a couple of times <laughs> well yeah I, do. I am starting to gather up a little collection maybe that can be next week's things like okay. who is the student you've been like she works for us yeah yeah <laughs> i was gonna be like wait a second yeah, yeah, she works i mean i know us. we love our students but that's no she worked for us in our office during the school year she does oh that's job. super fun that's yeah, so super we're getting fun. some of that stuff some of the other comments for us to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be a segment in and of itself, and maybe we'll be able to hit that next week. Oh, and next week I'll get to talk about, this is a little tease. So this weekend, I am the team clergy at a youth conference, and it's going to be my first time in that role. Uh, Usually it's a priest, and then I made the argument that, at least on the schedule, the, the responsibilities of that role is to give homilies, to do Eucharistic adoration, 
to spiritually support the team. And hey, deacons can do that. So they're giving it a shot. They're taking a, a chance on me. They're rolling the dice. Uh, and I'm really excited. Uh, oh, that's great. To, um, I mean, Bob, obviously you're going to do great. You'll, you'll love it too. That's great. I was going to ask you, you are on vacation, maybe a word or two before we close with that last part about your boat ride. <laughs> well, um, you know, my my uh, sister lives out here now, up here now, and uh, they have jet skis. And so they decided that we could rent a boat and we could go on the boat and they could jet ski from the boat. And I went. And that's it, huh? Well, I went and I think that's wonderful. I'm not like... It's not like I'm afraid of the water. That's definitely not the case. I just no. don't, you know, well, here's something that you could appreciate, Father Dave. You're trapped. You can't get away. You can't say, oh, I got to go somewhere, you know, like you always do. So you just, like, you're stuck on a boat, and you're there until whoever's driving the boat decides, time's up, we're just going to go back to the dock. Now, thankfully, these are my family members, so I'm not too upset about it. But I also, and I, I usually don't get motion sickness, but on this speedboat, um, when it was moving, it was fine, but when it stopped and it got really choppy and then it started like going up and down and side to side, that was like one of the first times in my life I was like, Ooh, I don't know if I really like this very much. And so thankfully, uh, we were going to go back to the dock to pick up somebody else. And then I, as I was going back to the dock, I was like, okay, I'm really glad we're going back to the dock. So it was a, it was a great day of, of vacation. You know, I just love the outdoors and going on the water and nature. Again, Bob. Again, Bob. Um, <laughs> This is but, just our but the next day, history. the next day it rained, and I went to the world's largest arcade called Fun Spot and you loved in it. Enfield, so New Hampshire. Oh my gosh, it was awesome! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our lives are so different. Did you go on the jet ski? What do you think, David? They are the funnest thing in the world. I can't believe you, Bob. <laughs> It's that's like so a funny. metallic seahorse that seeks my. They are so fun. Yeah, I saw Colby put posted a couple of things. Oh, well, Colby was just gunning I'm it. Sure. I mean, he was I'm in sure. his glory. It's Everybody was having a lot of fun. Actually, there's so much fun. And it looked like yeah. your girls were actually having a great time, too. Everybody's yeah. having a great time. We're having a blessed time up here in New Hampshire. And, and that's awesome. uh, we were, it was fun. We were actually on a boat to watch the fireworks, which was oh, that's fun. really, which that's was really pretty cool. That was yeah. fun. Okay. And yeah. you meant you're reading something. Talk to me. Right. So, you know, and I think you had an, I was, so the Feast of uh, St. Thomas More, yep. and I had remembered that you had mentioned something at one point about a prayer of St. Thomas More, and yep. I wanted to find that prayer, and it was quoted by Pope Francis in an um, exhortation he wrote. When did he write this? Goodness. It was many years ago. It was a, it was a bit of a sleeper document, to be honest, uh, and it's called uh, Gaudete et Exalte, um, which is about the joy of holiness. And um, when was it? Oh, 2018. The, solemn, the, the, uh, the solemnity of St. Joseph is when he did it, his sixth year. And you know, um, uh, many people are familiar with, uh, I hope you're kind of familiar with uh, his uh, Evangelii Gaudium, which is the joy of evangelizing. And he wrote this letter kind of out of nowhere. Uh, you know, the, the actual title is Rejoice and Be Glad about the call to holiness. And it's really gorgeous. You know, I mean, I was one of those things that, I hate to say this, it didn't cause any scandal, so it didn't get a lot of attention. I right, mean, right, that's, right. that's sadly the, the media world in which we live is, he just says really wonderful, gentle things about being holy. And um, and it's like, ah, oh, that's not that interesting, you know. But yeah, right. I might encourage any anybody out there, if you want, I mean, it's on the Vatican website. And what I've been very inspired with is he talks about, well, here's, here's a great line from it. It's from paragraph nine. Holiness is the most attractive face of the church. But even outside the Catholic church in different contexts, the Holy Spirit raises up signs of his presence which helps Christ's followers. St. John Paul II reminds us that the witness to Christ born, even to the shedding of blood, has become a common inheritance of Catholics, Orthodox, Anglicans, and Protestants. And uh, he said that the martyrs are a heritage which speaks more powerfully than all the causes of division. I, I just, it's just, no, it's that's, just I mean, that's beautiful. But yeah, I just love the image of the, the beauty of holiness. You yeah. Know, that when, you, when you meet somebody and there's, there's a holiness about them, there's a virtue about them, a depth to them. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's profoundly attractive. Here's another yeah. great line, which we can kind of unpack a little bit. He says, I'd like to contemplate the holiness present in the patience of God's people in those parents who raise their children with immense love. In those men and women who work hard to support their families and the sick 
in the elderly religious who never lose their smile. In the daily perseverance, I see the holiness of the church militant. Yet very often it is a holiness found in our next door neighbors. Those living in our midst reflect God's presence. We might call them the middle class of holiness. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, it's funny. I was just meeting with a, a mom. She's an alumni. She's got two kids. Life's full. It's busy. You know, yeah. everything wasn't quite what she expected it to be like, what she thought it was going to be like, or this kind of ideal, idyllic, idyllic yeah. world. Idyllic? And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, hmm. yeah. So, but, um, you know, I said that, that that's, that's ultimately, that's what makes us sanctified. That's what makes yeah. us holy and, and just really engaging that. And one of the things that Pope Francis has also talked about is his desire to canonize more men and women that aren't martyrs, that aren't priests, that aren't religious, men mm -hmm. and women just like that. The neighbor who's, who's patient, who's kind, who's loving, who puts Christ in the center of everything that they do and witnesses to that. And we need more models and more examples of that. So that's, yeah. uh, that's really cool. Yeah, you were mentioned also that he talked about uh, some some stumbling blocks to that, and that's that whole Gnosticism. This, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. One thing, this, he, oh, go this ahead. Is, well, this is really big because I think a danger is sometimes that the people feel if you're going to be holy, you have to do this, and, and right. kind of like the secret, like we know what it is to be holy, we know what it is, and if you don't worship like we do, you're not really holy, and that's. That's I, I'm glad he cautioned against that because it, that, that Gnostic is not a new heresy, right? It's not <laughs> the secret knowledge that you possess that other yeah. people don't know. I mean, that's really important. Yeah, he talks about two ancient heresies of the church and he applies them to the modern day. And the first one is Gnosticism. Um, Gnosticism uh, happened in the very beginnings of the life of the church. And again, these, all these heresies continue in one way or another, right? Yeah. So Gnosticism is the idea that what Jesus revealed to us was an understanding and an intelligence. And it's you're in the know now. That's gnosis, which is knowledge. And the real, you know, the real truth of the faith is the fact that you know the truth. And it's knowing the truth about things. Now, again, the thing about heresies is they're always almost right. You're right. It's yeah. not like they're just flat out absolutely wrong. So obviously Jesus is the way the truth and the life. But in a sense, Gnosticism takes out the way and the life part, and it just focuses on the truth. It says if you just know the right things, and if you're in the know with the right things, then that is, um, that's how you're saved. It gives you an attitude of superiority over other people who don't happen to be in the know. Oh, those foolish, sad people who aren't in the know. But Pope Francis keeps going back to the question of, so where are, where's the charity? Like, where are the signs of charity and love in your life? If it's a knowledge that leads you to isolation or to clicks, and that doesn't lead you to a, a joyful sharing of this with others, uh, a desire to help others, to reveal these truths in others' lives, he says that's really a, a big part of the life of, of Gnosticism, you know, which is we don't even need to care. If you don't get it, you're ignorant. And it really it really frames everything with what you know and what you don't. You know, are you in or are you out? That really becomes the heart of Gnosticism. He says this, he says, when you lean into this, uh, a dangerous confusion can arise. We think that because we know something or are able to explain it in certain terms, we, already, we are already saints, perfect and better than the ignorant masses. And St. John Paul II warned of the temptation on the part of those in the church who are more highly educated to feel somehow superior to other members of God's faithful. In fact, point of fact, what we think we know should always motivate us to respond more fully to God's love. Indeed, you learn so as to live. Theology and holiness are inseparable. Now, does he go into um, all the elements of it that earth is bad, spirit is good, or does he deal mostly with just the knowledge base? No, that's just pretty much the knowledge base. But he also yeah. quotes a big fan of yours, or you're a big fan of his, obviously. And he's a big fan of you, too. St. Francis okay. of Assisi. I just yeah, wanted yeah, to throw yeah. that out there. Uh, but he said, when Francis of Assisi saw some of his disciples were engaged in teaching, he, were, he wanted to avoid the temptations in Gnosticism. And he wrote to St. Anthony of Padua, I'm pleased that you teach sacred theology to the brothers, provided that you do not extinguish the spirit of prayer and devotion during study of this time, he recognized the temptation to turn the Christian experience into a set of intellectual exercises Correct. that distance us from the freshness of the gospel. And I, and I think that's the idea that, you know, I, you know, as a scholar, as somebody with a PhD, as somebody who works in academia, 
Um, I think it's a, I'm grateful for the caution. You know, it's not really a judgment as much as it's like, as you're trying to get holiness, books are wonderful and you need the truth and you need sound theology, but be careful. Are you changing your time of prayer, of really seeking the Lord's heart to a time of reading really great things about the Lord? Now, again, Mm -hmm. heresies always have a bit of truth in there. Should you read that stuff? Well, yeah, obviously you need to be formed, you need to be informed, but it can just become that entirely. I, it's one of the things I actually love about Franciscan and about our theology department and the colleagues that I get to work with, that they love the Lord. You know, like you go to some other theology departments, I mean, it it's insane to me. You actually get theology professors that say they're not sure if they believe in God or not. Yeah, and yeah. we go, how could that possibly be? It's like, well, you stopped praying and you started reading. And so I think it's one of the great charisms of our own university that, you know, we're all struggling to and trying to be holy. Right, right. And again, to maybe to conclude, just that the danger, it's a caution, yeah. is this idea that I have this knowledge um, and, and you don't have it, which makes me better than you. I can dismiss you. I mean, in some ways, the what was going on in Scotland was this whole question of who has the truth, who has the yeah. knowledge, and how you can totally dismiss and disfranchise another whole, whole population. So... Oh, that's great. That's good, Robert. Robert. So we're grateful for all you listeners who listen to wonderful podcasts such as these to help grow in your faith. And we hope it inspires you to prayer and to charity and to hope and to truly loving each other. Because at the end, that's what we're going to be judged by. Uh, It's how we love. So you're saying just listening to this podcast isn't enough. Did I say that out loud? Shoot. Yeah, that's all right. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all those that are listening to this podcast, that they know your love and know your heart. Watch over them, bless them and their families. Blessings to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dave. And thank you, all you listeners. Yes, you can ask us questions. We're going to start getting to them on our upcoming episodes. You can email us at hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. God bless everybody. See you, Bob. See you, Dave. Okay.